Welcome to An Outside View. I'm your host, Dick Saccaro, and joining me today is Richard Peeler. Richard, welcome to An Outside View. Dick, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, Richard uh, has been a resident of the town for 10 years, twice the amount I have. I'm going on five years this September. I also have the pleasure of serving on the uh, representative town meeting as a member, as Richard is uh, as well. He's in Precinct 7, and I'm in Precinct 3. So Richard, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, maybe perception of what kind of town you think people want in Walpole. Well, elected officials in town, and even some appointed positions, like FinCom, uh, they vote on millions of dollars, tax dollars, each year. Um, and oftentimes those votes are taken and voted on in a vacuum. I think we need to uh, back up a bit. And we need to ask the town people, what type of a community do they really want? There's a big push on Beacon Hill to create more housing, especially in proximity to the uh, tr transit line. Uh, we have stations, and, and Walpole has one, which is one of the reasons why you have three significant residential developments in very close proximity uh, to our train depot. Uh, then there, I understand that there is another proposed where the Gilmore Lumber is. Well, you're adding hundreds of units of housing. Uh, some people will say that's good, and some people will say it's too much. Uh, I still like to see the demand analysis to justify that many units coming on the market at one time in a town where it, it, there are only 25,000 people. Uh, so uh, not sure uh, if the planning board uh, required those demand analysis from the de uh, developers of those sites. At what point do you say, wait, enough let's let's absorb these before we start approving anything else and that's just as it relates to housing in the downtown um, there are other development uh, issues uh, whether it's commercial development whether it's industrial development at the industrial park um, when I say we need to take a step back we need to really speak among ourselves, and I'm talking about all the people throughout the town, whether it's through a survey, whether it's through charrettes, whether it's through webinars, workshops, but we need more engagement by people throughout the town from each generation. And uh, whether it's millennials, or baby boomers, or seniors, uh, although the baby boomers are now seniors, and I, I being one of them. And, Me as uh, well. You as well. Um, and we need to ask ourselves, what type of town do we want Walpole to be? Many people moved to Walpole because it offered whatever appealed to them. The town is changing. Everything changes but is it the type of change that uh, is in sync with what the people who live here, who invest here, who pay taxes here, uh, who support community organizations, uh, uh, fund public works projects, infrastructure projects? Do we ever ask them what they want? And the decisions are being made by, I believe, too small a group of people. Um, Let's talk about that for a minute. What are you referring to? Are you referring to the five selectmen? Are you referring to the finance committee or the moderator? What well, the selectmen, uh, I mean, the RTMs. Um, there are two articles that are going to be on Springtown Warren. Uh, uh, one is, is that uh, uh, any capital project that is $5 million or more is to go to the voters. The voters need to decide on those projects. That right now, uh, the RTMs uh, decide. That equates to 5% of the total town budget. Y yes. Um, 
so when I say that decisions are being made by a small group of people, you're talking about projects that are quite significant. And I think that in those instances, the general population really needs to weigh in. Good decisions point. are being made by RTMs, FinCom, Board of Selectmen, without really checking with the voters. Right. Um, and one, one example of that is the ball fields that was 10% of the budget, $10 million. Right. And uh, probably only 2% of the town will actually use it. I hear they want to privatize it and rent it out to uh, parties. Well, you, you keep on hearing different scenarios. Uh, I would like to know exactly what is the, the, the intentions. You know, um, in the state of Rhode Island, not that Rhode Island doesn't have its uh, issues, uh, but several years ago, uh, the state legislature required every municipality in the state of Rhode Island to come up with a comprehensive plan. They wanted each municipality uh, to ask the very questions that, that I've just uh, mentioned. Um, could be zoning issues, it could be uh, the addition of uh, 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 schools, uh, infrastructure projects, and it's, it's like a blueprint, those comprehensive plans, so that when a developer comes before the planning board, uh, comes before the public, is that project uh, uh, synergistic with what the comprehensive plan has laid out? Uh, is it compatible? That we don't role, have that. Wouldn't that be a role of a town planner? We, uh, I've been in town for t 10 years, as you mentioned. Uh, I don't think we've ever had a town planner. We've I, had an economic development planner, and they come and they go. And you have all these issues. And uh, oftentimes, they, uh, uh, decisions are being made by people who really don't have the background to make the decisions that they're making. Right. that could impact the town for decades. Exactly. One inherent problem, I know we discussed this on a couple shows, uh, one I believe you were on with some other RTNs, but the town moderator to me has uh, way too much power. He personally selects all the FinCom members, the 15 FinCom members, so if their politics or their style doesn't necessarily fit with his, Obviously, he's not going to make an appointment. And it's reflected in their vote. Every time they vote, it's 15-0, 14-1. And then that carries over to town meeting, where we always lose, when I say we, the more conservative group always lose, that they're, they're trying to help the, the fiscal conservatives, fiscal right. conservatives, and lower the taxes and make sure the budgets run efficiently. We're always outvoted, it seems like, a couple dozen votes. And that's the reason why I believe that project, when they get to a certain point, dollar, dollar size, that the, the, the voters should make those decisions. Do you think the... Um, and, and getting back to the uh, uh, FinCom, uh, for example, and, and the moderator, what, just the term moderator. The moderator is not supposed to have any philosophical leanings. Right? They're supposed to be uh, the moderator between those who are for and those who are against a particular item. Um, when the moderator, and as you say, uh, uh, carries a tremendous amount of uh, uh, weight or power uh, in our local government, uh, when you appoint people all of the same philosophy, right? You're doing an injustice. Absolutely. This moderator believes that this is the most uh, has stated that this is the most uh, most diversified uh, 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 FinCom uh, that we've ever had. It's not well, reflected and, in and the his, and, yeah, and his re reasoning was was that he selected people from all of the uh, eight precincts in Walpole. Yes, they from all eight precincts but they are all from the same philosophical bent. Uh, right. There is no debate. So they were handpicked. There is no debate. There is no debate. Why, why are they selected by the moderators? Shouldn't they be voted the in like maybe we need a change in the town charter that instead of the moderator having that much power and appointing the, um, the members of the finance committee, maybe they should have to run like RTMs. Perhaps. Um, 
I don't know if I have a question about whether the moderator, uh, that power should be taken away, uh, but we should be holding the moderator accountable as we should uh, 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 hold all elected officials accountable and even appointed officials accountable I so that they are truly responsible uh, to all of the electorate, not some, one segment. Or, or some special interest groups. And it's very important, the point you're bringing up, because for the viewers out there that don't realize this, when we have town meeting twice a year, spring and fall, before every article comes up for a vote by the uh, RTMs, the finance committee gives their approval or not. So it seems like every time they're for something, it goes through with that two-thirds vote, and every time they're against something, it doesn't go through by two-thirds vote. We saw that very much evident in the right. ball field vote. Right. Which we question, obviously, about uh, losing by one vote. Right. When someone uh, voted to abstain and also the way the election was held in Precinct 1. Right. And that's a huge, huge... Uh, oh, certainly is. When you're talking about uh, a $10 million price tag? Right. So um, let's talk a little bit about now how to pay for the town that, that, that people want and talk about a little bit of municipal budgets. On several occasions at the town meeting, um, I asked the question, of, you know, why don't we, why doesn't the Board of Selectmen, and this could be done by just by a simple vote of the Board of Selectmen, uh, you go to zero-based budgeting. Zero-based budgeting, very simply, is each year when department heads are asked to look at, put their budgets together and make their budget requests, each year uh, they should start from zero. And they should ask themselves the question, okay, what do we want to accomplish? What is this department? Engineering, uh, uh, recreation, uh, public works. What do we, what do we uh, want to accomplish this year? Okay. Now, how, what do we need to do to implement what those objectives are? Uh, I, mean, I wonder uh, if those questions are being asked and if that's the process. And then this way, uh, so instead of saying, well, last year, uh, my budget was uh, $500,000. Well, because of Proposition 2.5, we can increase it by a certain percentage each year. So instead of cutting back on some things or trying to do more with less, uh, the budgets keep on expanding. Um, sometimes they're held, they're held flat. But even that begs the question, is too much money being spent by that particular department. You know, no department, whether it's in Walpole or any municipality or, or state or federal uh, agency department in the entire country wants to have less money next year than they had the year before. Right. Right? So they try to protect that. And so the mentality is, is that, well, if we have 500000 we have to spend 500000 Who says? Right. Just because that's what's in your budget, why do you feel that you have to spend that money? Their thinking is, is that, well, if we don't spend it, next year we may not get what we ask for. So there are a couple of solutions to that. Um, and one is uh, what's called uh, uh, incentive budgeting. Uh, and that is where the leaders of the town would say to the departments, heads, the board of selectmen through the town manager would say to the, each of the department heads, look, what are you looking to accomplish this year? Where can you save money? Where can we economize? And for every dollar that you save, We'll put that into a fund. And so maybe not this year or next year, but a couple of years from now, there's something, some 
expensive item that you really need in order to run your department. The money is there for it. So it's not like you're taking the money away, you're putting it in a piggy bank. You're putting it in escrow until, so this way, you don't have to keep on going to the taxpayers. Which brings me to another uh, of the articles that uh, we're working on that will be on Spring Town Meeting. And that is that once a capital project is complete, within a certain number of days, whatever money is left over goes into a single interest-bearing escrow account. Right now, there are scores of, of accounts, projects that have been completed, and money that's left over, either because it was uh, part of the, uh, 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 what's the term, but, but monies that were left over. They just sit in an account someplace. They're not collecting interest, and oftentimes those capital projects, through the bonding process, we're paying interest, but the money that's left over from those projects are sitting somewhere, instead of uh, being put into an interest-bearing, a single interest-bearing escrow account. So when a new project, capital project comes up, say it's $3 million, the cost, instead of going to the taxpayers first and say, taxpayers, we need you to approve $3 million for XYZ project. If there's a million dollars or a million and a half dollars or two million dollars in that escrow account, that money gets used first. So instead of going to the taxpayers for three million dollars, you're going to them for one million, a million and a half. We should be using the monies that are sitting there. Um, so Not to mention, they would generate uh, earnings as well. And, and there's also earnings. There. The fact that the money that's there in all these different accounts and it's not collecting interest, uh, that's a shame. For exa example, on the ball fields, I believe they used a million and a half free cash as a down payment. What's free cash? On the, I'm still trying to be right. as <laughs> somebody, free. what is free cash? Ta that's taxpayer tax dollars. Right. They should call it unrestricted, maybe. Maybe, right. But I agree with you, and I always maintain that, you know, in the public sector, it's easy to balance a budget on the taxpayers' backs. You just go up to full two and a half percent. Right. And then you have added new growth coming in. Uh, when your homes, uh, the valuations increase in the assessments, you have more revenue coming in. And getting back to your point that you just talked about with these new apartment complexes coming in, uh, the yes sayers would say, well, it's new revenue in the town, but there comes a cost to that too. Services will increase, public safety, education, roads, so there's two sides to, right. to every coin. And what happens if the, uh, the developers of those projects, uh, uh, the lease up time uh, is much longer than what they hoped for, what they anticipated for. Um, and the revenues are not coming in, whether it's a rental project or a condominium, the condos haven't been sold, the apartments haven't been rented. Um, what happens then? That is, that's a major problem uh, that you don't want uh, to be confronted with. Um, so. I saw this problem in Brockton. Uh, I, I lived in Brockton for uh, over 62 years of my life and I was very active in politics and on a lot of committees. And they really drove the tax base out of the city. They had a very high commercial tax rate so no businesses would come to the city. Their uh, infrastructure started deteriorating. Their residential tax rates went through the roof. The only thing that saved them that the value of the homes are uh, much uh, less than other communities like Walpole. So people right. attracted to come to Brockton. And then they started bringing in all of this public housing. And then they ran into some problems and they were, re they were getting more state aid to replace the tax base that they lost. So the analogy with public government and private industry Private industry, you can only go up on your product so much or someone's going to say, you know what, I'm not buying from you anymore. I'm going to go right. to the competitor down the street. Right. What happens in public sectors is the town people say, I can't afford to live here anymore, so they're going to move out to another town. Right. And then what happens then? 
they're going to start bringing in the same thing that happened in Brockton, projects and uh, public fund, funded projects and housing, and uh, they, they got to get state revenue coming in. When I was going, uh, when I had uh, drafted the two articles that I referenced earlier, uh, you needed to submit 10 signatures. Uh, they suggested 12. Well, as I was going around, I submitted uh, 80 signatures for each of the two petitions. And that was on when we had that weekend that we had a snowstorm. Uh, it was a long weekend, a lot of people weren't around. Uh, and I'll tell you something. Um, when I was going around getting signatures, and others, there were several others that helped me uh, collect these signatures. Uh, uh, we, we could have gotten at least 10 times the number of signatures we did. We got 80 signatures. I wanted to make sure that uh, no one was going to say, well, we can't accept those articles because uh, we question a couple of those signatures. Where does so, that stand now? Do you have to make a presentation in front well, of Well, I expect to FinCom? be called before uh, FinCom. Uh, I haven't got, uh, received word on that yet. But it will uh, be on. It will be on. Uh, according to the town clerk, town uh, the town clerk, uh, it will be in spring town meeting for a full vote. Uh, for vote of and the uh, of the RTMs. And if I and, were and a betting is, man, Richard, yeah. I would bet the FinCom does not recommend it, even though it'll be on and as an article. There'll be an article. You'll they'll, probably they'll be. Oppose it oh yeah, you'll probably be one, fourteen to one, uh, right. fourteen to one uh, oppose. Right. Uh, well, uh, let me say this. Uh, is that um, this is not an exercise. Uh, I truly believe that, uh, that the taxpayers in Walpole are not being treated fairly. Uh, I believe that, uh, that those who are making various decisions, uh, as I mentioned, are, are, dealing, are addressing more the interests of special interest groups and not the community as a whole. Um, and, um, and for all the taxpayers who are watching this program, uh, we will be supplying the names of all the IT, RTMs in Great your idea. respective uh, precincts. And it's going to be up to everybody to make sure they reach out to their RTMs and demand that they vote in support of these two articles. Great idea. And also, uh, we need more public awareness. This, this town has very little media, uh, so it has to be... Well, that's one of the reasons why people get away with what they do exactly. is because the majority of people, they're working, you have uh, two people in the household, they're both working, their children, their activities. They really don't have the time to really pay attention to a lot right. of the things that are going on. But those things that are going on affect their daily lives. And I bet anything, if they were aware of what's going on and what it cost them, that you would get more than one out of every three voters to go out and vote. Well, uh, town meeting, uh, it's always, uh, the, the town elections is always the first Saturday uh, in June. I think this is, is it June 2nd this year. Right. Uh, uh, that's a tough time to have elections. But many other towns have them in March, April, May. June comes along, that's the beginning, you know, you're the summer, the weather's nice, uh, people are uh, uh, planting flowers, there's all kinds of activities, there's little league games and uh, sport activities, and so there's other things for them to do and they kind of forget about their responsibility, and that is the, to exercise their, uh, their franchise. And we, have, and we can get the word out through social media outlets. We could have uh, public uh, meetings, like at the town library, at the senior center, and make the people more aware of uh, how important their vote is and what this is all about. Right. I'm sure if the average person knew a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and how it affects their pocketbook, that they would go out and vote. I mean, Trump is getting the message out there. The economy's never been better. Unemployment is down. Uh, minorities uh, are doing well under Everyone's his administration. Doing well. And Everyone's doing well. That's why I think he's going to win the biggest landslide that we've ever had in a presidential right. election. I'll make this prediction. If Bernie Sanders is their nominee, I wouldn't be surprised if Massachusetts votes for Trump. Even, though, but that's. 
That's just uh, right, my, right. Uh, my uh, prediction. I think if he gets the nomination, they'll have a broken convention, and uh, they'll they'll. Seems like they're really pushing Bloomberg. They're going out of their way now in Nevada. You're supposed to poll at, I believe, uh, ten percent or better. He's polling way down at six, but they're allowing him on the debate stage. So it looks like he's going to be there dialing because he has the money, but uh, he doesn't have a chance, uh, especially right. after. They released a couple of tapes that just came yeah. out on him. He made some very uh, racist comments. You know, one of the other things uh, is that uh, recently, uh, I represent the town of Walpole on the Norfolk County Advisory Board. Uh, many people don't realize that Walpole has, I mean, uh, Norfolk County has a county government. Um, and there are representatives from each of the 28 municipalities that comprise Norfolk County. They sent a representative right. to uh, represent the, the interests of their By the way, community. each resident pays like a dollar something to fund the county as That's well. Right. That's correct. Uh, People aren't aware of that, but right. you pay a tax. Uh, right. And, um, uh, but one of the things that they have done, which was, uh, I was very pleased with because we pushed for it, um, is that we have all of these facilities, courthouses, they're all, the, the courthouses in Norfolk County are owned by the county government. Uh, the um, we kept on asking questions because the county government kept on saying, well, we need to replace the roof on this one, or this one has some environmental issues, or this one has, uh, uh, we got the, the windows, or we have lead paint that we have to remove and all of this. So I, I asked on a couple of different uh, meetings, I, I said, do we have a full understanding? Have we inventory, have we done a physical audit of all of the facilities uh, that the county owns, manages, and operates. Do you have any idea what the condition those buildings are in, those facilities are in, and the costs associated to bring them up to a, the, 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 the standard that they should be meeting? Right. Uh, so we pushed for that for a couple of years. Uh, last fall, they finally did that audit, and I and I commended them at our December meeting. They did a terrific job. Now we know exactly the condition of all of these buildings and what how much money is required to bring each of those facilities up to speed. We should be doing the same thing in Walpole. The people in Norwich should be doing it. Is doing a complete physical audit of every facility that we have. I agree. And this way, from a planning and budgeting standpoint, I mean, you can't plan and budget if you don't know what the issues are. Right. So, again, it's take, taking a step back. What do we have? What conditions uh, are those facilities in? Are, are they up to snuff or do they need, are they, uh, there's a lot of the deferred maintenance. Right. Uh, so. We have, we have a couple minutes left, but you made some great points there, and I thank you for coming on the show. And we also need, as we started out the show, more open, transparent government. And when you have a state where the legislators are exempt from the Freedom of Public Information Act, something's wrong. And our town, by the way, uh, has not received good grades about releasing information. And they're paid and funded by the taxpayers, so they should have a wide open, transparent form of government. And then the last thing, if you're not happy people with your selectmen, I mean, there's always an alternative of a recall. And if you, you have a vote of no confidence and you don't feel that they're, uh, they're, that they're breaching their fiduciary responsibilities by not perform, uh, performing and being open and transparent, you can always recall them and then you have a new election. But. I thank you for coming on the show. And by the mm -hmm. way, the Norfolk County um, commissioners, they get paid pretty well. They get like $47,000 a year when oh, yeah. the selectmen out of town for, get for nothing. For, for meeting once, uh, three hours a week. That's not a beach government work, as I always say. Right. <laughs> well, Richard, I wish you the best of luck, yeah. and uh, let's see what happens in the spring town meeting. Hopefully these articles you're bringing up will go through, and maybe we can heighten the awareness. They will get approved the if the there. vote is reach out to the RTMs and demand, not request, demand that they pass them. Otherwise, two months, the, 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 when June comes along, they're not gonna get their support at the voting group. Right. And good luck, you're up for re-election. 
Yes, I, I hope my uh, the voters in Precinct 7 well, send me back. If I were in 7, I, you had my vote. All right. right. Seven. Well, Fair thanks enough. again, Richard. All right. And uh, wish you the best of luck in the okay. election. And the next time on an outside view, hope you enjoyed the show.